So back in the SNES era, I was playing a ton of games I really enjoyed, and most of the games obviously were, you know, centered around Mario and all his characters, and they just branched off from there. So one that caught my eye, because Yoshi was on it, was Tetris Attack, was the name of the game. Uh, this game was very unique because a lot a lot of times um, there's so many puzzle games now are taken off on our phones and everything like that but at this time this was kind of it wasn't quite like Tetris because you're mixing blocks around but you're lining up the colors and as those colors would break the idea is to make combos so what I mean by that is if you line up a set of colors that would break and then fall on to do another match and then so on and so on. The bigger the combo, the better the attack you can do on your opponent. So as uh, I started playing this, I got kind of highly addicted to it. It was really fun. And then I lost um, lost track of it over the years. And just sometimes you, you're out somewhere and you remember a game and it just comes back into your head like that. And there was this uh, pawn place up in Columbia I used to shop it, and they had that particular game for the SNES. I remember buying it, paying a little bit more than I thought I should have, but the guy kind of knew what he had, so I'll give him that. It's, it's a great game. Um, I get it. We come back home, and I, me and my brother start playing this, and he's completely unfamiliar with the game. And as we're playing it, it it's just... He starts to get the flow of it because it's it's a simple game it's not too complex the idea is like i said the bigger the combos the bigger the attack you can put on your opponent so that means more blocks they gotta pretty much break in order to clear out their stack over there because if the stack like typical tetris rules if it reaches the very top it's over you lose so the idea is just to keep throwing blocks on each other you know like back and forth back and forth and I remember we got getting so good at the game and just it, it felt like a freaking pay-per-view fight and the game just started like freaking freezing because we were breaking so many blocks and the game could process like so much going on, on the screen at the time. I remember me and my brother laughing about it because it was just like, oh, we're going to break it. We're going to break the game. It's going to happen. And it was kind of funny because, uh, it, it you know, it, it would go through, but it was just, just kind of funny because I've, I've never had... Back then, you know, the, those little cartridges, they couldn't handle that much, you know? So if so much is going on screen, if it's running really, you know, a lot of data, it's just like, it, you can notice the, the latency and the lag. It's kind of funny. No, 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 no. Man, the green, the green. No! No! What the hell? <laughs> Even though we're not online at this point, you know, this is console days. It was a unique game. Like I said, it didn't play like typical Tetris, but at the same time, it's like it was it was simplistic. And as the blocks and as you're going through the game, even uh, playing one player and beating the stages, it's just it keeps you on your toes. It's uh, as the blocks go up, the you know, as the time goes on, the game gets faster and faster. So the idea is to break a lot at, at the beginning because you don't want to wait to the end because the blocks will start rising really quick and you'll have enough time. So it's going to weed out a winner regardless of what you're doing. This game, like I said, it, it was it was highly addicting. And I, I think it really goes under the radar because there were so many puzzle games coming out. I know Tetris had like infinite amounts of... Uh, games they came out with, you know, that had the, their uh, title under it. But there was so many other games like Bust a Move and, and uh, puzzle games, Illumins I played, which I'll probably talk about that another time, uh, that were, you know, very unique. They, they brought something to the table that was interesting. And now we have like Candy Crush, but even way before Candy Crush came out, games like this was like doing things of that nature, just the early stages. And if, if I remember right... I believe Dr. Mario was the game before this came out. Like, I, I know that was on Nintendo. And I did play a fair share of that, but just the whole turning the pills and you know, just two colors. 
it kind of got boring. It, it just didn't have the same spunk that this game had. I, I introduced it to different people, and when, when they get the, the hang of it, the feel of it, it's just so much fun. Like, we have a great time playing it, because you can get so competitive, and it's a simple process. See, that's, again, when games used to be simple. Like, there wasn't much to them. You could spend about two or three games, and then they kind of picked up on the concept. Like, oh, okay, I understand what's going on. I just got done uh, playing it recently, all the way played through, and I, I have just as much fun as I did, like, playing it years ago. One of the coolest things you can do, I'll, I'll leave it on this, is get a really crazy combo. And sometimes just the blocks will fall in, in order, and you can't really explain it. It's just the way it goes. But, so the idea was... We would uh, get our stacks like the blocks really hot on each side. Me and my brother would, and we would start making breaks, and we would hope for chain combos because the bigger the chain combo, the more blocks you could throw on your opponent. And if you got a big enough chain, and I think it was like eight, eight to ten breaks in a row as the blocks would fall and break into other blocks, and on and on and on, uh, a sound would go off, and you would just drop this massive block on the other guy's side and it was just so satisfying to see that because it was just it was just like a knockout punch to them and you know you know they can feel that you're just i remember we talk so much shit to each other they hear that noise and they just look at you like damn because <laughs> you knew it was a lot to come back from but I, I just, it, it didn't mean it was over either. I mean, there, there was a good chance you could still come back, and that's what made the game cool. It's like, no, at no point in the game does you or your opponent have, like, the advantage because the tide can turn so quickly. And I like that because usually games, once you get so far ahead or once you get to a certain point, there's just no coming back from it, and it kind of takes away the sales of, like, winning or that feeling of, like, overcoming a big obstacle, and this game kind of keeps it there. And I like that because I think both sides start with the exact same block, so nobody can say they got a better set than the other person did. And the speed's the same, so it's it's very fair. And it really makes you think. Puzzle games, that's one thing I like about them. They keep me on my toes, especially this one at certain stages. As the game goes on, it kind of makes you panic. You go into panic mode, like, oh, I gotta fix this before you, know, you lose the game. But honestly, I have a handful of puzzle games. Um, they're not like my all time favorite. Uh, type of video games to play, but this one is definitely probably on my top five, I would put it, in puzzle games, and uh, I would highly recommend people to try it, because especially if just playing alone is fun, but if you can get a friend and they're decent at it, it's amazing.